Water moves in a cycle. Just like a roller coaster, it ends in the same place it began, only to do it all over again. The first stage starts thanks to the energy from the sun, evaporation. This is where heat changes water from a liquid to a gas, water vapor. Most evaporation happens over the world's oceans, but a small portion also occurs on land. We see it when puddles disappear after it rains. We can also get water from plants. We call that transpiration. As the water vapor rises into the atmosphere, the air becomes cooler. Just like when a roller coaster rises, this is where the excitement really begins. When the water vapor climbs high enough, it will turn back into a water droplet. This is called condensation. Put billions of water droplets next to each other, and we now have something very recognizable. Clouds. But as the water droplets collide, and merge with each other, they will become heavier. Until finally, they can no longer stay suspended in the sky. And the giant drop begins. This is called precipitation. This includes rain, snow, and hail. When rain freezes into ice before hitting the ground, it's called sleet. When rain freezes on a snowflake, it's called grapple. Any form of water falling from the sky to the ground is considered precipitation. At this point, water has moved from the ocean to the sky to the ground. But pay attention, because now there is more than one path back to the ocean. The first path takes us underground, where water is absorbed by the soil. This is called infiltration. Once the water infiltrates the ground, it will move down through the soil. This is called percolation. Eventually, the water will reach an underground river. This is called groundwater. The second path occurs when water can't be absorbed by the ground. Water will instead run off to the next lowest place. This is called runoff. We see this when snow in the mountains melts in the spring and becomes the streams that make for breathtaking views. We can also see runoff in another form, flash flooding. Every time we see flash flooding, it means too much water fell too quickly for the ground to absorb it. Now, the water is forced to move downstream until finally it's able to be absorbed into the ground. Eventually, runoff and groundwater allow water to make its way back to the lakes, rivers, and oceans, where it collects and accumulates. This is called collection. Like a roller coaster pulling back into the station, the ride is officially over. But the end of the journey for some marks just the beginning for others, and the cycle begins again.